Hello, I'm not Chuck, and today we're going to take a look at putting that antenna on the roof of the travel trailer. As you recall, in part one I promised I would show you how the antenna was to be installed, both inside and out, and also the repairs that were necessary because of the damage done by the small leak in the roof. As it turns out, that's too much to put into one part, so today we'll just cover the exterior portion of the antenna installation. Well, it's another pretty day here in West Tennessee. It's uh, November the 21st, I believe. Temperature is about 54 degrees out here, but the sun is shining, the breeze is light, and hopefully I'm going to be able to uh, finish mounting this um, wine guard Razor Z1 antenna on the top of my travel trailer. As you can see, um, I put some duct tape over the opening. We've had rain for a couple of days, and even though I didn't think there'd be much uh, danger of rain getting in, I decided to put a little duct tape over it. And sort of be sure that I wouldn't have any additional water inside the trailer. First thing I'm going to do is take uh, some uh, solvent and try to clean off um, this right here. There's a little bit of glue residue left. I'm going to see if I can get some of that off um, before I go any further. This has had a chance to dry out considerably. Even though it had to have some tape on it, I can see that the wood has dried a fair amount since I covered it up. It looks a little better. I'm going to go over it one more time. I have a tendency to overdo things, I guess. But when you're working on the roof of your RV, I think it's better to overdo things than underdo them because the way that a lot of RVs are damaged is by allowing water to seep under the roof, onto the wooden roof material, down inside the trailer, and it's just a, a silent menace. It's there and it's precipitating uh, mildew, mold, uh, and ultimately rot of everything that it comes in contact with. So I'm going to do my best to make sure I don't get any water down through this hole. Step two is to uh, take a little soapy water and try to clean a place on the EPDM roof, get rid of as much dirt and so forth as I possibly can so that the roof is clean underneath the antenna and therefore the butyl tape and the Dicor lap sealant will have the best chance possible to adhere thoroughly. This is the antenna that I'm putting up. It's a Weingard Razor Z1. I think the Z1 indicates they changed the base plate a little bit. When it first came out, the base plate was much smaller and was round, and I think they found that that uh, wasn't good enough, so they've now made a larger base plate um, and made it square, give it more, uh, a larger footprint. Now, <clears throat> this is the coax that goes to the distribution panel inside the trailer. I put a little piece of tape over the end of it just to keep water from getting up inside the coax, which is really not much of a risk anymore because most good coax, this is RG6, most good coax uh, has a foam dielectric in it and water doesn't get into it. It used to be with older coax that uh, water could seep up in here because the dielectric, that's the white part down in there, was not waterproof. It actually would uh, soak water up inside there. What's going to happen ultimately is this is going to uh, attach 
there and uh, I'll tighten it up but <clears throat> I know that I have enough in this pigtail that's built into the antenna I have enough slack so that uh, I'll be able to make this connection down inside the RV so I'm not going to worry about that right now what I am going to have to worry about is the fact that this hole is not big enough uh, for that. That requires a one and three quarter, approximately one and three quarter inch hole. So I'm going to stuff this coax back down between the roof and the ceiling, push it back and get it out of the way. I have an access hole down in the ceiling that you'll see a little later. Uh, won't be any trouble for me to get my hands on that piece of coax. And then I'm going to start enlarging the hole. Now, several ways that I could do this, but the way I've chosen to do it is with a, a rasp. Uh, the hole doesn't lack much being big enough, maybe another quarter of an inch or so. So I'm just going to try to rasp the sides of the hole. enough so that the base of the uh, antenna will be a pretty, pretty good fit inside the hole. close. In fact, maybe just right. See what a nice fit that is? Snug. So I'm going to quit there. Going to put that down between the roof and the ceiling. The antenna is supposed to be, the base is supposed to be oriented with this side to the front. There's a word front written right there. I don't know whether you can see it or not. But anyway, that's the way it's supposed to be oriented. So, make sure my coax is not pinched. And that's the way it'll go. So, next step is to put down what's called butyl tape. This is it, and I'm going to put it on the base of the antenna, uh, a strip down all four sides. I'm going to make sure that the tape covers the mounting holes so that when I put the screws in, those screws will go through the butyl tape. It's actually a good idea if you, when you're putting on this butyl tape, if you leave it, if you let it extend a little bit past the edge. What we want to happen is we want, when we put the mounting screws down, we want that butyl tape to squeeze out just a little bit. And we want it to form a watertight seal between the bottom of the antenna mounting plate and the butyl roof and the uh, EPDM roof. Now since the roof is a little bit uh, arched I may have to put some extra butyl tape uh, along some of the edges in order to compensate for that arched roof. You don't want to really, really overdo the butyl tape, but once again, you don't want to underdo it either. I 
I might should have left that on there. I think I'll leave that piece on. Maybe stick these other two pieces back on to let me dry fit it a little bit. The antenna turns, uh, supposed to turn 360 degrees, of course, but it doesn't quite. I'd say it's more like 350, but I don't think it's so directional that that 10 degree difference will be significant in the reception. After you've turned it 350 degrees or so, it hits a stop and you have to go all the way back around to the other side instead in other words you can't just keep turning it and turning it in a in a continuous circle all right let me try that again now and see drop the coax pigtail down through the hole try to make sure it gets out of the way by being at the top at the front portion of the hole make sure i have the word front at the front of the trailer. That seems to be in the hole. I'm sure it is. And there's enough flicks in that base. I'll be back with you in just a minute. Now I have a moist rag to wipe that soap residue off. And a dry rag. Remove that moisture. And I need a pair of scissors to cut this mending tape. I had to buy this tape at the local RV dealer and it was outrageously expensive. I guess you want to know how expensive it was $14 for a piece six inches wide and 24 inches long yeah I thought that was too much too but It looks like that's adhering pretty well. You can see the outline of the the hole that I had to cut in the roof material. Got a pretty good coverage. Would have liked to have had a little more on the sides, but it's kind of a, like wearing a belt and suspenders. If I do a good job uh, mounting the roof bracket on, this will never get any water on it anyway. There's the hole. 
there's that little offset place in the hole and what I want to do there is make a little piercing so that I can poke the coax down in exactly the right place now before I get to that I'm going to remove the protective material that I put back on the butyl tape and I'm going to cut some of that excess away I don't want to create a mound where the pieces join together. I do want them to touch and I do want a good seal, but I don't want to create a uh, mound that actually creates a place for water to get in. Now there you can see how that butyl tape sticks to itself. I'm not going to try anymore to get that off. I believe I'll make a mess if I do. Yeah, it looks like the same with that one. Pull all the protective paper off and then we'll see how it looks. See if I can get this to turn loose here. Doesn't look like it. Looks like I'll just make things worse. Sometimes when you make a mistake, correcting the mistake is worse than leaving it alone. I'm afraid that's what'll be here. Push your coax connector down through that little hole. Perfect. Now I'm going to get it pretty much oriented here. I'll tip it up that way. That goes toward the front. That looks like it ought to go back down in there real. I certainly hope so. Mm. All right, the shaft of the face of the antenna slipped into that hole pretty well. So I want to try to make it point as close to exactly toward the front of the trailer as possible. And that looks like it. Now, as I was telling you, there's a stop back here. Turn it 
350 degrees or so and it hits the stop again so there is just about five or ten degrees there that it doesn't cover but it'll do now I'm going to drive five screws down through here to hold it to the roof and in the process of doing that I think I should squeeze out some butyl tape all right I'm going to start at the back looks like maybe that'll be the easiest place to get to see my butyl tape squeezing out a little bit there I may come back and tighten that up a little more <clears throat> but I'm going to make one loop around before I try to snug them down all the way same thing on this side I can see uh, the butyl tape being pushed out all right I believe that's got that portion of the job done see a little bit of squeeze out all along the edges which is exactly what I want to see looks good on this side too so I'm gonna call that job done and go on to the final phase Now the final step in the process involves putting some self-leveling Dicor lap sealant over all the screw heads and around all the exposed edges. And as you can see, it comes out of comes in a standard caulk-sized tube. It's not caulk and it's not silicone sealant. Do not use either one of those two on your roof. Use only Dicor lap sealant. And if you're putting it on a flat level, more or less level surface like this, you want the self-leveling. Okay, I'm going to start on this side so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start by covering up that screw head right there. Now this is self-leveling sealant. So over the next couple of hours, it will level itself level itself out to a certain extent my job now is just to cover all the exposed edges and the screw heads and it would be great if you could do a neat job But thorough is better than neat in this case. That takes care of the base. Now I'm going to put a little bit on the edges of the tape that I put down. Just to sort of add a little waterproofness. You can see that the die core has already begun to uh, self-level and over the next hour or so it will continue doing that. Well it's been about 48 hours or so since uh, I put the die core around the base of the antenna so I thought maybe we'd go up and Give you a look at how well it's leveled out remember we used self-leveling die core and the whole point of that is you put it on and it sort of sticks to whatever you put it on and then over the next few hours it uh, it levels itself out that's the reason it's called self-leveling so As you can see, it has done a good job of 
leveling itself out. Instead of being lots of little puddles and drops, it sort of collected itself quite well into a good solid mass. Looks good. You can see, for example, right there, you can see where I covered the screw head. You can see underneath there where the slot is in the screw head. But the screw head it itself is completely covered and one solid layer of die core from the edge of the EPDM roof all the way up to the screw. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to look all the way around, make sure I didn't miss any places, and assuming I didn't, I'm going to call this job well done. And that takes care of the exterior portion of the RV antenna installation. In part three, we'll cover the inside part of the installation, and I'll also show you the repairs that were necessary because of the small leak that was in the roof. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and come back next time. Oh, and don't forget, I'm not Chuck.